you, Speaker, and I rise to speak on the public health and wellbeing amendments that have come down as suggested amendments from the Legislative Council for consideration. And I stand here with um, you know, major disappointment because what we're here for is because this bill that was put before the House in a very rushed manner at the last sitting just two weeks ago was a very bad bill. Now, I've already stated that in this place, so I'm here to discuss the 29 amendments that uh, are suggested. And, of course, tomorrow we'll be doing the next uh, 54 amendments. So a bill that's 120 pages long has 90 pages of amendments. I think that tells us everything we need to know. The government has had a long time to get this right. Instead of cooperating, and let's go back to the start of the pandemic where they said we're all in this together, and how many times did we offer our assistance? Because this is a health situation. This is a health crisis. This is not a time for politics. That's what the Premier kept saying. But what is this? This is an, a game of politics because nine months ago, when it was clear and obvious that state of emergency would, would run out on December 15th, there did need to be some regulations in place to manage the pandemic. No one's denying that. They put together a bill that is absolutely chilling because it can lock people down when there's not even a pandemic in the state, let alone on the shores of the nation even. And it can detain people, which is why we're here today or this afternoon, because instead of getting the bill right and making sure that when you detain someone, that in this state, this nation, in fact, in any Western part of the world, when you detain someone, that person just logically should have the right to a judiciary. If you make a mistake, you commit a crime, you have the right to a judiciary. And that's why the QCs, the eminent legal professionals who said to the government, giving them counsel on the rule of law, because the government was in absolute... Um, well, the community were in shock that the government would do this. So they wanted to lock us down and then take away the right to appeal if you were detained for breaking the regulations. Absolutely amazing. Now, so just this, this piece of legislation is probably the most significant piece of legislation we've seen in front of the House for a very long time. So why rush it? And why only talk to three people to shore up the numbers to get the bill through? And why make it so bad that 83 amendments need to take place because you hadn't actually done your, your homework? Now, what's most concerning about this, um, the detaining, which is what the amendment we're discussing mainly today um, does, it actually gives, it, it's improved the bill. There's no doubt about that because we do want to have the right to appeal. A very basic right, you would think. Something that we would have all thought in the state of Victoria that that would have been something that would have been in the bill in the first place. I mean, it's really basic stuff. How on earth was that ever left out? It's legal studies year 11 stuff. You know, it's not that hard. But here we have a situation where the government just wanted so much power that they're prepared to rush something through that is absolutely put the fear in so many eminent professionals, like the 60 QCs who wrote the open letter saying, this is not OK, like the Human Rights Commissioner, like the Ombudsman. You do not see people like that coming out and speaking up against legislation. And I wonder why, because you think about it, with the Westminster system that's been in place for hundreds of years, the rule of separation of power is something we all hold very sacrosanct. Now, what does this do? This do so if, if we have a crime committed, the jury, the, the judiciary system sorts that out. They, in fact, enforce the law. We, as legislators, make the law. Order. And we Order. should Order. never, ever compromise that um, rule, that uh, the separation of states. But by having the um, health... Uh, what were they called? The, the, the being able to appoint someone who's not part of the judiciary system to actually detain people and then not have that um, separation of state is absolutely 
concerning, worrying, and that's why we had so many people, not just the opposition concerned, but very, very eminent professionals concerned that I think many of us, both sides, hold in high regard. So why? Why are we here when there was more than enough time? Lockdowns are serious stuff. I mean, let's recall, when you lock down the whole state, you stop kids from going to school. You stop businesses from being able to, being able to make a living. You stop husbands and wives of 50 years being able to be by the bedside of their dying partner. And for me, that one, that one really makes it really profound as to how bad a lockdown is. So if we're going to introduce a pandemic law that takes away the rights of humans to live their life with freedom, we need to make sure we don't overstep those freedoms. And this legislation more than oversteps it. You know, to judge people based on their attributes, to absolutely um, fly in the face of all the work we've done as a society with the Equal Opportunities Act of 2010 and be able to lock people up based on an attribute. It, the word I keep coming up with is chilling. It is absolutely chilling and we should be standing up against that sort of over, overreach, incredible overreach. And as I keep saying, any person, and this Premier wanting the power to rule by decree, which is absolutely what that bill um, gives him, and he can actually also be not only just the Premier with the absolute power, but also appoint himself as the Health Minister, and this is very concerning stuff. Any person who draws up a bill and wants to ram it through like they have with the minimal consultation, lock people out of consultation as they've done with all the other crossbenchers in the opposition, is somebody, I believe, who should never, ever be in a position of power. Not in our country, not in the state of Victoria, not when we've fought so hard as a society for our freedoms. Our forefathers who went to war Every single person who's come to this country because they've valued what our country stands for should be, should be concerned and is concerned. I have never, ever had the amount of emails, phone calls, contacts that I've had where people are very genuinely, genuinely concerned. I have never had this level of contact. And I think, as I said, a bill that's 120 pages long with 90 pages of repairs, of amendments, really tells you what a bad bill this is. So whilst the 29 amendments that have come down today that will um, are being debated here make this bill a better bill, it does not make it a piece of legislation any of us want to see in the state of Victoria. No one should want to see a piece of legislation that, you know, detains someone OK, yes, um, it has improved, it has improved, but it's still bad. You know, but to begin with, to actually think that you could detain someone without any right to appeal is, is just... It's obviously not an omission. It's an intention. It is really scary. It is really scary, the Member for Brighton. You are quite right. And that is why so many Victorians are up in arms. It's not that they... Uh, don't understand we are in a health crisis. It's not that they don't understand that a pandemic needs management. It's the fact that this government have become so arrogant that they are not interested in democracy. They're interested in pandemics being controlled by one person to rule by decree, by one person who could also nominate himself as the health minister and the premier if he chose to. This is the most worrying piece of legislation I think this has ever come in front of this parliament, to take away our rights, our freedoms, and to have no way in the initial bill to appeal that is appalling. I would like to um, ensure that the words that my um, colleague, the member for Ripon, put forward in the amendment to that this bill be deferred indefinitely, be what we support, and I absolutely oppose this bill. It's a poor bill. Legislation is not about intent. It's about getting it right. And this is way too important to not get it right. And the amendments do not do that. 
I absolutely, absolutely oppose this rotten bill. Order.